children with with conditions that they've had their whole lives or acquired in pediatrics are now living into adulthood. Um, in fact, 90% of those long-standing conditions are being carried into adulthood. And how that happens is fraught unless it is well-managed. So what tends to happen in our siloed system of pediatric services and adult services is either the, the adolescent gets stuck in the pediatric services or, does, or moves to adult services but with loss, the falling through the cracks that I described uh, in this morning's talk. So what I try to bring from the generic literature is this concept of transition. And transition actually is defined as a managed, um, well thought through process of taking the adolescent from pediatric services where they're pretty passive and have things done for them and are cared for and loved and you know tended for in their service into adult uh, care, which tends to be a little bit more brutal. Um, and the adolescent is expected to get on with things, manage their own care, take their pulls on time, and basically be self-reliant. And again, what I try to frame in this setup is that adolescents are themselves in a time of developmental transition. We know that they're going from the, the pre-adolescent all the way through to adulthood. So already there's a time of separation from family, from things that were childlike to now things that are adult-like. And we superimpose on top of that this need to change their health services. And what I really advocated for, and I believe there is a strong uh, evidence base growing uh, to support, is that we need to actually actively manage that process in our HIV uh, set settings. I think, again, to make both adult um, as service providers uh, as well as to remind people in primary health care that our adolescents are surviving. We have about 3.4 million uh, under 15-year-olds living with HIV around the world today. Those kids are moving into adulthood. They're bringing with them quite a legacy, and the legacy is that they span a time in HIV care where we saw real ro inroads made in PNTCT, uh, but we also had dual therapy, we had monotherapy, uh, really suboptimal therapies, and so these perinatally infected uh, children have have been exposed to a lot of antiretrovirals and suboptimal antiretrovirals. So they come through with quite a legacy for the adult clinics. In addition, of course, we have adolescents who are behaviorally infected, and they're also contributing to that population. Both of those populations, quite different, need to be managed and taken into adult care. So I proposed some models for doing that. I made some real recommendations that this process should be started early. It should involve the adolescent and their family. It should be written down. It should um, be actually carefully worked out with the adolescent so it, it marches with the adolescent's development. It takes into consideration their psychological development, their emotional development, allows them to regress if, if that is the case, and, and, and really ensures that at the end of the day we have a self-reliant adult who can successfully uh, take their treatment through on their own. Um, how, you know, I think encouragingly actually presented some models, both from the U.S. as well as from Africa. So encouragingly, we're starting to see things happening. Also here in Southeast Asia, there's some very um, exciting programs beginning to happen. And ended with the Archbishop Tutu uh, actually calling, first of all, calling it miraculous that these kids have survived into adulthood. And I think we need to celebrate that. Uh, but then we need to make sure that they have a very successful transition into being adult pull takers um, and survive well into adulthood. And, um, you know, introducing to the field this notion of doing it in an organized, managed way. That's called transition.